Hello, welcome to English for Everyone, where we practice real life American English. Today, we want to learn to avoid some mistakes and practice English. So let's get started. First, this is not correct. It looks pretty easy, but if it's your first time, it actually is really hard to skate on the ice. I cannot say it's really hard to skate on the ice. After two, I cannot put an S on the verb. I have to use skate in a simple form. It's really hard to skate on the ice. And because the T in skate is between vowels, you can change it to a fast D and say skate on, skate on. It's really hard to skate on the ice. Not skates on, but skate on or skate on. But it's more common to hear the fast D sound. It's really hard to skate on the ice. Let's practice. Is it really hard to skate on the ice? That's right, it's really hard to skate on the ice. This is also not correct. I'd like to go ice skating. Just one? Three. Three? Yeah. How long do I have to skate on the ice? As long as you're here. As oh, okay, as you're perfect. Skating. Three ice skates. $30. I cannot say three ice skates, but she means this. And this is not three ice skates. Let's practice. What do you see? Do you see three skates? That's right, I see three skates. Now what do you see? Do you see three skates or do you see three pairs of skates? That's right, I see three pairs of skates. This is also not correct. Right now I'm done ice skating. I'm finished with ice skating. I cannot say I'm finished with ice skating. We just say I'm finished skating. We don't use with. We just use the gerund skating. I'm finished skating. She's finished skating. So when can I say with? I can say with when I talk about things, nouns. Example, the waitress goes to the table and asks the customer, are you finished with that? Are you finished with your plate? In this case, we can use with. So the waitress asked her if she was finished with her plate, and she said no. She's not finished with her plate. Let's practice. Is she finished with her plate? That's right, she's not finished with her plate. She's still eating. Now let's practice with finish plus a gerund. For activities, for verbs. Example, they're finished skating. How do I know they're finished skating? Because they hung up their skates. Remember the phrasal verb, hang up, in the past, hung up. They hung up their skates, so I know they're finished skating. Let's practice. Are they finished skating? That's right, they're finished skating. How do you know they're finished skating? Did they hang up their skates? That's right, they hung up their skates. They're finished skating. Also, we don't really hear the T in finished because the T sound t is between consonants, you don't really hear it. They're finished skating. The tongue goes up a little bit, but doesn't make a real T. They're finished skating. This is also not correct. Okay, well I do, and I'm going to show you guys how to ice skate. So come along with me, and let's go to the ice skating rink. I cannot say come along with me. The word come is pronounced with the sound uh, uh, like cup and up. We make the short sound, come. We don't say calm. It's not an open sound, it's a closed sound. Come along. Come along with me. Example, he's going to come along. They're going somewhere, and he's going to come along. Let's practice. Is he going to come along? That's right, he's going to come along. The idea, he's going to go with them. He's going to come along. This is also not correct. And if you guys want a whole review about skiing and snowboarding... I cannot say a whole review. A whole review. To make the L at the end of whole, we use a dark L. The tongue gets tense and expands. Oh, oh. And you have to touch the roof of your mouth with the tip of your tongue. Oh, oh. I can't say a whole review. I have to make a complete L sound touching the top of my mouth. A whole review. A whole review. At the end of the lesson, you need to do a whole review. A complete entire review. At the end of the lesson, you need to do a whole review. Let's practice. At the end of the lesson, do you need to do a whole review? That's right, at the end of the lesson, you need to do a whole review. This is also not correct. 
It means on the one hand, it was bad that I didn't go to the school trip. I cannot say I didn't go to the school trip. Normally when I use the verb go, I use to. Go to school, go to work. But with trip, it's different. We don't use to, we use on. You go on a trip. So it's correct to say I didn't go on the school trip, not to the school trip. Because we're using trip. Example, go in the past, went. He went on the school trip. Or I can say he went on a. If it's one in general, I can use a. He went on a school trip. If it's specific, I use the. He went on the school trip, the one you already know about. Well, I don't know about this trip, so I'm going to use a. It's one in general. He went on a school trip. Let's practice. Did he go on a school trip? That's right. He went on a school trip, not to a school trip. Remember, with trip, use on. This is also not correct. When there is a storm coming, a few hours before that is calm. I cannot say a few hours before that is calm. There's no subject. I need a subject. A few hours before that is not a subject. So I need it. It, the pronoun, is your subject. So I can say a few hours before that, it's calm. It is contraction it's. I have to use it in this case because you need a subject. A few hours before that, it's calm. This is also not correct. Birds are flying around. There is a very pleasant wind. I cannot say there's a very pleasant wind. When we use the word wind, we're not talking about something pleasant. Wind is not pleasant. So what do you say? If the wind is pleasant, we have to use a different word. We use breeze. And breeze is countable, so we say a, uh, a pleasant breeze, a nice breeze. We don't say a pleasant wind. We have to use the word breeze in this case, because it's pleasant. Example, there's a pleasant breeze. It feels good. It feels nice. It's pleasant. So use the word breeze. And remember, it's countable, so we have to say a. Uh, a pleasant breeze. There's a pleasant breeze. Let's practice. Is there a pleasant breeze? That's right. There's a pleasant breeze. This is also not correct. He only talks to me when I have snacks. It means whenever I have snacks, he's my friend. If I don't have any snacks, he no longer is my friend. I cannot say he no longer is my friend. When I use no longer, this is an adverb, we have to put it after the form of to be. Is is your form of to be. So always put no longer after the form of to be. Is no longer, are no longer, was no longer, were no longer. With all these verbs, we have to put no longer after. So it's correct to say he is no longer my friend. That means he's not my friend anymore. He's no longer my friend. Example, they're not friends anymore. They used to be friends, but they had a fight. So, they're not friends anymore. I can use no longer. They are no longer friends. I cannot say they no longer are friends. I have to put no longer after the form of to be. Are is the form of to be. So, no longer goes after are. They are no longer friends. They're no longer friends. It's so sad. If I ask a question, I say, are they still friends? And you answer, no, they're no longer friends. They're not friends anymore. Let's practice. Are they still friends? That's right, they're no longer friends. They're not friends anymore. So sad. This is also not correct. To be snowed under means to have a lot of things to do, but maybe you don't have enough time to do everything. We usually use the preposition with, to be snowed under with something. The word is not pronounced preposition. We use the short e eh sound like ten and bed, e eh, e eh, pre, preposition. We cannot use the long e sound and say pre, preposition, preposition. We have to use the short sound e eh, e eh, pre, preposition, prepositions. Everybody hates prepositions. Everybody learning English, that is. Prepositions are very difficult. And my students always ask me, how do I learn prepositions? And there's no easy answer. 
You have to learn each one in each case individually with the word it's used with, with the expression it's used with. You have to learn each one individually. There's no one rule that helps you with prepositions. They're just difficult. Sorry. So a lot of students have trouble with prepositions. What do you think? Do you think a lot of students have trouble with prepositions? That's right. A lot of students have trouble with prepositions. They're hard. This is also not correct. Calm before the storm. First of all, it's calm. L is a silent letter. Calm. It's not column. Calm. In the word calm, the L is not silent. It's not a silent consonant. It's just a changed consonant. When we have A-L-M together, the L changes a little bit. What happens? Well, you don't make a complete L. The tongue curls and goes up, but it doesn't touch the top of your mouth. It doesn't touch the roof of your mouth. It's just curled in the middle of your mouth. Calm. It's not calm, calm. That's no L. I need a little curled L that doesn't touch the roof of my mouth. Like this. Oh, calm. Not calm. It's not a real L. It's almost an L. I have to move the tongue and make this almost L sound. Just curl it and pull it up a little bit, but don't touch the top of your mouth. Calm. We see with words like palm and almond. We have the same thing. A-L-M. The L is not silent. It sounds silent, but something's happening there. Your tongue is curling and moving up, but not all the way up. It's not a real L sound. It's almost an L sound. Example, he needs to stay calm. He's getting too excited. He needs to stay calm. Not calm, but calm. Do you hear the difference? The tongue is up, curled. Let's practice. Does he need to stay calm? That's right. He needs to stay calm. Or this word, palm. This is a palm tree. And there are a lot of palm trees in California. Let's practice. Are there a lot of palm trees in California? That's right. There are a lot of palm trees in California. And these are almonds. Not almonds and not almonds, but almonds. The tongue goes up a little bit and curls. And I love almonds. They're supposed to be really healthy. What about you? Do you like almonds? Very good. This is also not correct. Exactly. Yesterday, I missed my chance to join the basketball team. We cannot say yesterday, yesterday. We have to pronounce the T and say yesterday. Also, make the er sound like burger. Yester, ter, yester. A complete T sound, a release T, t, t and the er sound together. Ter, yesterday, yesterday. Yesterday, I went shopping. What did you do yesterday? Very good. Today, we're going to practice with different pronunciations. First, we see this word, cruel. We see the U-E-L at the end. We do not pronounce it cruel. We're not pronouncing the E. We're pronouncing the U-E together as the sound U. Cru. Leaking it to a dark L. Cruel. It sounds like pool and cool. You have the long U sound followed by the dark L. Pool. Cool. And this word is cruel. It's the opposite of kind. It means to be very mean to somebody. You are cruel to somebody. Don't be cruel to other people. Be kind. So the dark L is the same position as a light L. You put the tongue up touching the roof of your mouth, not your teeth, behind your teeth. And what's different is your tongue is not straight. It goes a little high in the back. Oh, oh. And the bottom of the tongue expands. It gets bigger to make the dark L. So cruel, oh, oh, oh. That's the dark L. Cruel. And it's not cruel. There's kind of an extra sound, and where it comes from is, when you say ooh, your mouth is in a more closed position. Crew. 
And when you make the dark L, the mouth opens a little bit. Oh, oh. So when you link those sounds, when the mouth opens a little bit, you get a little bit of an extra sound. But it's not a. Uh, it's not an extra vowel. It's one vowel. Cruel. Oh. Your mouth opens and you make an extra little sound. Cruel. Like pool and cool. Example, this boy is not kind to animals. He's cruel to animals. Use the preposition to, pronounced t, cruel to, cruel to animals. This boy is cruel to animals. Let's practice. Is this boy cruel to animals? That's right. He's cruel to animals. He's not a nice boy. Now let's look at this word with a similar spelling pattern and a similar pronunciation. Gruel. Again, we see the U-E-L making the long oo sound, followed by a dark L. Just like in the words, pool and cool. Gruel. Gruel is a kind of food. It can be made like oatmeal, but it's not so thick. It's usually thinner. And in America, it's known for being bad. It's not a good food. So if you want to complain about some food that you don't like, it's very soupy and thin, you can say, this stuff tastes like gruel. I'm not eating this. Example, I don't want gruel for breakfast. I want something better. I want a better breakfast. What about you? Do you want gruel for breakfast or do you want something better? Very good. Now let's compare these two words. Gruel is a kind of food. It ends with a dark L because the L is after a vowel. It's at the end of the word after a vowel. That's when you use a dark L. Gruel. But if I put ing after it, now I have an L between vowels. If you have an L or a double L between vowels, that's a light L. So it's a little different. Grueling. Ling. Grueling. What's different? Well, the light L, you don't expand at the bottom of the tongue. You don't raise the back of the tongue. You just make it straight. Uh, uh. The tip of the tongue is in the same position. It's touching the roof of your mouth right behind your teeth, but not touching your teeth. Uh, uh. Grueling. Grueling. Use the long oo, and when it connects, when it links to the light L, it sounds a little different. Listen. Gruel and grueling. It's not so dark. Grueling. Now, grueling is completely different from gruel. Grueling is an adjective. It's to describe something that's very, very difficult. It's not just hard. It's so difficult that it's like torture. It's similar to something that's like punishing you. Very difficult. Example, running a marathon is grueling. It's very, very difficult. It's like torture. It's punishing. What do you think? Is running a marathon grueling? That's right. Running a marathon is grueling. Also notice with the U-E-L, we don't say U-L. It's not grueling. It's grueling. Use the long U plus the light L. Grueling. It's grueling. It's horrible. Now let's take a closer look at the difference between the light L and the dark L. We see with these two words, listen and allow, we use the light L. How do you know? Well, when you have an L at the start of a word, before a vowel, that's a light L. L, -l listen, listen. The tongue is touching the roof of your mouth, right behind the teeth. Listen. And the tongue is flat and straight. It's not raised in the back. It's not expanded at the bottom. It's just straight. Listen. And with the word allow, you see, the L, here the double L, is between vowels. When you have an L or a double L between vowels, that's a light L also. Allow, allow. Now let's look at these two words, call and milk. These are both dark Ls because you have the L at the end of the word after a vowel. After a vowel, we use a dark L. Call. After a vowel, at the end of the word, we use the dark L. Call. Or if the L is after a vowel, but before a consonant. It's not between vowels. It's between a vowel and a consonant. The L is after a vowel, but before a consonant. This is also a dark L. Mil, milk. It's not milk. It's milk. Oh, oh.
The tongue gets fatter at the bottom, it expands, and it goes up a little bit in the back. L, L, milk. The L in milk is also a dark L. Now let's look at other words ending in U-E-L and see the different pronunciations we have. The first word is dual. Dual. We see U-E-L making the same sound as before, like pool and cool. Dual. And it ends with a dark L. Because the L is after a vowel at the end of a word. Dual. This is a dual. They're fighting a dual. And you can also use dual as a verb and add ing. They are dueling. Now what changed? Now the L in dueling is between vowels. So we have to change that L to a light L. So it's not dueling, it's dueling, dueling. They're dueling. Somebody's going to die. It's not a good idea. They shouldn't duel. So see the difference? Duel with a dark L and dueling with a light L. Because the L is between vowels in the word dueling. And it's not dueling. Don't pronounce that E. It's one sound. Ooh, plus a dark L. Duel and dueling. Let's practice. What are they doing? Are they dueling? That's right. They're dueling. Not a good idea. They should solve their conflict some other way. Now let's look at this word. Fuel. We see the same spelling pattern, U-E-L at the end, but this one's a little different. We're going to use the I sound. F, fuel. Not fool, but fuel. We have the same long U sound after the Y, so it's U, plus the dark L. Fuel. Fuel. Not fuel. Remember, when you link the U plus the dark L, the mouth opens a little bit, but it's not a real syllable. It's like this. Fuel. Fuel. This is fuel. And fuel can be a verb, too. I can say they're fueling the jet. They're putting fuel in the jet. So I can say they're fueling the jet. Now we see the word fueling with the L between vowels. So it's a light L now. It's a little different. Fueling. Not fueling, but fueling. The light L is straighter. Uh, uh, fueling. They're fueling the jet. We can't leave yet because they're still fueling the jet. Let's practice. Can we leave or are they still fueling the jet? That's right. We can't leave yet. They're still fueling the jet. So let's review all the words we've learned that end with U-E-L. The first one was cruel, then gruel, also dual and fuel. We see with the first three, they're pronounced pretty much the same. Cruel, gruel, and dual. They all have the oo sound plus a dark L. Ool, like pool and cool. But remember, with fuel, we have the same spelling pattern, but the pronunciation is a little different. We put that y sound in there. Fia, fia, fuel. So all four words, cruel, gruel, dual, and fuel. Now let's look at a different spelling pattern with the same pronunciation. This word, jewel. It's pronounced the same as cool and pool. You have the long oo sound plus the dark L. There's no extra vowel. It's not jewel, it's jewel. Like pool and cool. Make the long oo sound plus the dark L. Oo. The mouth opens a little bit. It makes a little extra sound. Jewel. Jewel. This is a jewel. A ruby, for example. A ruby is a jewel. And if I make something with this jewel, I call it jewelry. So the first sound, jewel, plus re. Together, jewel, re. And what about the L? Does it change? No, it doesn't change. It's still a dark L. Because you have the L before a consonant. The L is not between vowels. When the L is between vowels, that's a light L. But this is still a dark L. Just like jewel, the L stays the same in jewelry. Let's practice. What is a ruby? That's right. A ruby is a jewel. And what about this? Is this expensive jewelry? That's right. This is expensive jewelry. That was difficult. 
Let's do something a little easier. Let's look at these words. These words are all the same. Cool, pool, tool, and fool. You see the same spelling, double O plus L, and the same pronunciation. It's the long oo sound plus the dark L. Cool, pool, tool, and fool. Now let's change one word. Let's change cool to cooling. Now the L in cooling, is it a dark L or a light L? That's right, it's a light L because it's between vowels. So let's hear the difference. Cool has a dark L at the end, but cooling has a light L. Do you hear the difference? Cool, cooling, cooling. Not cooling, but cooling. The tongue is straighter. The tongue is straighter and thinner. It's not expanded at the bottom. It's not coming up at the bottom. It's just straight. Example, this is a cooling system. And it's a very complex cooling system. I don't understand how it works. It's really complex. It's a complex cooling system. Let's practice. Is this a complex cooling system? That's right. This is a complex cooling system. Now we see another spelling pattern. U-L-E. The first word is rule, but the second word is not mule, it's mule, so it's a little different. Let's talk about mule. What is a mule? A mule is an animal. It's a mix of a horse and a donkey. The horse and the donkey get married and they have a baby, and that baby is a mule. It looks a little like a horse and a little like a donkey. That's a mule. And it doesn't matter if it's a boy mule or a girl mule. We call them both mules. And here's a fun fact. If you get two mules together, they cannot have babies. They cannot have children. It's impossible. Only a horse and a donkey can make a mule. And they're hard workers, but they're kind of stupid. They're kind of slow. But mules work hard. They're more popular in the southern states in the United States. The southern part of the United States has a lot of mules. Let's practice. Do mules work hard? That's right. Mules work hard. So remember, mule has the y, y sound. M -y mule. Finish with a dark L because the L is at the end of the word after a vowel. Mule. Now let's talk about rule. With rule, we don't say rule. There's no y. It's just ru, dark L, o, rule. Example, you need to follow the rules. But what if I change the word rule to ruler? Now the L is different. Is it a dark L or a light L? That's right, it's a light L because it's between vowels. So it's not ruler, it's ruler. Ruler. Use a light L. It's straighter. L -l ruler. Ruler. And what is a ruler? A ruler is a measuring device like this. In America, it's 12 inches or 1 foot. You also have centimeters on an American ruler, but the length is always 1 foot. If you go to other countries, you might find a ruler that's 20 centimeters. It's a little shorter, but it's still a ruler. I used to use rulers in school. When I was in school, I used a ruler. What about you? Did you use a ruler when you were in school? Very good. So we see the L's are different there. When you said school, you used a dark L, because the L is at the end of the word, after a vowel. School. And when you said ruler, you used a light L, because the L is between vowels. Very good. Also remember, a ruler is always a stick. If it's longer, a longer stick. For example, this is a yard stick. It's three feet in the United States, 36 inches. And if it's not a stick, then it's called a tape measure or a measuring tape, not a ruler. But there's another kind of ruler. Also, a king can be a ruler, an emperor, a czar. They can all be rulers. For example, Napoleon. Napoleon was the ruler of France a long time ago. Let's practice. Was Napoleon the ruler of France? That's right, Napoleon was the ruler of France a long time ago. Now let's look at words ending in U-L-E 
that have multiple syllables. They're not one-syllable words like rule and mule. They have multiple syllables. First, let's talk about this word because it has two different pronunciations. Some people stress the first syllable only, and some people stress both syllables. If you stress both syllables, you say schedule, schedule, and you say schedule, 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 schedule. Let's hear some examples. To stay on schedule for the test, you're going to have to be finished in eight days, okay? Okay. The Death Star will be completed on schedule. Everyone in favor of changing the schedule, please raise your hand. But, um, what if your schedule changes? And some people pronounce it differently. They say, schedule, schedule. And they put the stress only on the first syllable. Schedule. Let's hear some examples. You know, I'm sure having a schedule where it's not hectic. So it's the shooting schedule for the day that Celia died. What about next week? What's your schedule like? Okay, then let's talk about coming up with a schedule for visitation rights. Call my secretary, have her schedule a lunch. Finish the work schedule for next week. Did it? I type up the schedule for the trucking fleet. So in both pronunciations, we end with a dark L because the L is after a vowel at the end of the word. Schedule. Schedule. One is longer. Schedule. And it has an extra sound. It's not like pool and cool. It's schedule. Oh, oh, oh. There's an extra vowel there. Or you can make it short and say schedule. Schedule. Also, we notice the D-U making the J sound, like in juice and jump. j j j Schedule. Or schedule. Example, I have a flexible work schedule. What about you? Do you have a flexible work schedule? Very good. Now let's change the word with I-N-G. Scheduling. Scheduling. He has some scheduling conflicts. Pronunciation. When I say schedule, I have a dark L. But when I say scheduling, is it dark or light? That's right, it's light because the L is between vowels. Scheduling. So you can say scheduling with the stress on the first syllable. Scheduling. Or you can say scheduling and make it longer on the second syllable. Scheduling. But in both words, the L is a light L because it's between vowels. Let's practice. Does he have any scheduling conflicts? That's right. He has some scheduling conflicts. He needs to fix his schedule. And we have this word, module. With module, the stress is on the first syllable. So the second syllable is short. Module. And we see the D makes the J sound, like juice and jump. Module. D-U in the middle of the word usually makes the J sound. So a module can be a lesson in a teaching or training system. Example, she's working on module two. She's still working on module two. And we see with the word, we use the dark L because it's after a vowel at the end of the word. Module. She's still working on module two. Let's practice. Is she still working on module two? That's right. She's still working on module two. She's not finished yet. And this is also a module. This is a lunar module. They landed on the moon in the lunar module. This thing is called a lunar module. Let's practice. What do you call this? What is it called? That's right. It's called a lunar module. And this word is capsule. Again, the stress is on the first syllable, so the second syllable is short. It's not capsule, it's capsule, with a dark L at the end. Capsule. So we see the medicine is available in tablets and capsules. The tablet is the round one, and the capsule is the one that looks like a cylinder. One tablet or two capsules. The medicine is available in both tablets and capsules. Let's practice. Is the medicine available in tablets and capsules? That's right. The medicine is available in both tablets and capsules. So you have a choice. Now let's look at this word. This word is ridicule. We see the stress on the first syllable and the third syllable. So we pronounce it long. It's not ridicule or ridicule. 
It's ridicule. Make the long oo sound plus the dark L at the end of the word. Ridicule. Ridicule is a verb. It means to make fun of someone or to make someone look ridiculous. It's not nice to ridicule people. And if I change the verb with ing, ridiculing. Is the L a dark L or a light L? That's right. It's a light L because it's between vowels. It's different. Ridiculing. Ridiculing. You still have the long oo sound. Ridicule. Remember with the e sound. Ridiculing. Ridiculing. The boy is ridiculing the girl. It's not nice to ridicule people. Let's practice. Is it nice to ridicule people? That's right. It's not nice to ridicule people. And is the boy ridiculing the girl? That's right. The boy is ridiculing the girl. Now let's look at this word. Ridiculous. The stress moved to the second syllable. Ridiculous. So the last two syllables are short. It's not you. It's ridiculous. You still have the y sound. Y, y. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. So the last two syllables are short. Uh, uh. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. The boy is trying to make the girl look ridiculous. He's ridiculing her, so he's trying to make her look ridiculous. Let's practice. Is he trying to make her look ridiculous? That's right. He's trying to make her look ridiculous. It's not nice. So remember, we have a lot of different spelling patterns to make the sound ool, and sometimes yul. And we also learned how to identify the dark L from the light L, and how to pronounce it correctly. This is also not correct. Hello, and welcome to another lesson. My name is Maddy from POC English. I cannot say hello. The first syllable is the short e, eh, like ten and red. He he. Hello. In America, we don't say hello. Hello. We say hello. Hello. How are you? Use the short s sound. Well, it's not time to say hello. It's time to say goodbye. I hope you liked this video. And if you enjoyed it and found it useful, subscribe to our channel. And if you want to become a member, click the join button. And we'll see you next time.